What do you think of when you think about ninjas in pajamas? Beyond the obvious thoughts you have when you first hear that ridiculous phrase, CSGO fans probably think about an eternally underachieving team from Sweden. There will be no major in 2017 for NIP. Aren't going to be attending the minor, they've been eliminated. NIP not making it to the minor once again. The team once cursed by a Bay Area witch to only win tournaments in Oakland. But once upon a time, NIP was the best CSGO team in the world. Once upon a time, NIP won 87 maps in a row. Eighty-seven land maps in a row is one of the most impressive esports records of all time, and no team in CS:GO has really matched it since. It was just very cool and surprising to see that you actually can be so dominant in a game, and also that you were one of the best players at the same time. That's probably my biggest success. It actually just seems impossible. Who could possibly win eighty-seven land maps without dropping a single one? For comparison, Cloud9, the Boston Major champions played 16 maps of that tournament, and they dropped four of them. Most teams that win tournaments drop a few maps here or there. When was the last time you saw a CSGO team win a tournament without dropping a map? Now imagine winning 10. Between August 2012, when they won Steel Series Go, and April 2013, when they placed second at Star Ladder Star Series 5, NIP played 10 LAN tournaments and didn't drop a single map. That means NIP dominated the earliest era of competitive CSGO. The game came out in August 2012, the same week NIP won their first tournament. NIP were the first legendary CSGO team. According to esports journalist Duncan Thorin Shields, NIP had a lot going for them at the time that made that streak possible. For one, some of the best Counter-Strike 1.6 teams in the world had yet to transition to CSGO. Part of the reason as to why these teams didn't change lineups and why they came over so late to CSGO is because 1.6 didn't actually die when NIP had begun playing CSGO. When they first won, won that first tournament in CSGO in August of 2012, there were still a number of months and a number of 1.6 big size tournaments with higher prize purses at times in first place than CSGO. CSGO had a messy launch. Part of it was that the game was still unbalanced and unrefined, but another part of it was that dedicated 1.6 players had poured thousands of hours into their game. CSGO just wasn't 1.6. So, for a while, a bunch of pro teams just kept playing 1.6. There were concurrent competitive communities for both CSGO and 1.6, and that meant that some of the best Counter-Strike players in the world just weren't at CSGO tournaments. ESC didn't enter CSGO until September 2012, and were slow to make roster changes that they would need to become the dominant force they would be known as, as Virtus Pro. Fnatic and Na'Vi took longer to enter CSGO, but they wouldn't pose a serious threat for months. NIP, on the other hand, was going to tournaments from day one, they were there at the beginning. They had more time with the game and more time on the maps. And that's an advantage that only gets mitigated by time. But that number, 87-0, kind of defies all explanation. Some team had to have put in the effort to beat Nip on just one map. Some team had to have found the crack in their armor. But they didn't. The only team that held a candle to NIP was Very Gamers, the French roster that went on to become Titan. Unfortunately, back then, CSGO had a limited map pool, and that made it even harder to beat NIP. Very Games chose to focus on four maps, but NIP were the best at all five maps. And now it's all on RPK. He comes in from behind, but get right position. Get right, we'll win it for NIP Gaming! Nip's reign finally came to an end at Star Ladder Star Series 5, where they lost to Virtus Pro. That was an all CIS roster featuring the likes of Angel and Doja. Here we go, Flaren flashing over and oh the smokes are so good right now. If they can get, get in there and put the bomb down, it's all on Fuflaren, he's got it, and he's just gonna be waiting to see if anyone is there and if he decides no one is, so now the bomb is gonna go down. Oh but Adrian coming in from behind, get right with a kill. Adrian with another one, it's a double oh, kill for him. So Great turn of events. And Adrian with a triple five. kill, it's all on exist. Is he loses this one round and that's gonna be it. 16-14 versus Pro, the first team in history to beat NIP on land. It felt quite sad when it happened, but it was like, 
it's, it was just such an amazing run. I, I mean, I could never believe that anything like that would happen. It was a sign that other teams had begun to figure out CSGO. Or, at the very least, figure out Nick. 1v1 right now, he needs the hat trick to keep his team in this. Shock steps away, not gonna happen! They are the winners of the Raid Call EMS1 2013 Fall Finals. The record stands as one of the most impressive in esports history. And while Nip doesn't really live up to it these days, you have to respect a team built on the foundation of the once undisputed best CSGO team in the world. Thanks for watching. If you want more great content just like this, be sure to hit the subscribe button.